I'm Kamikaze Plumber. And I'm Jackie. I'm Magmar Fire. I'm Winter Sick. And I'm a Ninja. And this is the TDC cast. Broadcast by members of the Desert Colossus. For those of you who don't know, the Desert Colossus is a rather old Zelda fan site created by its founder, Zach O'Reilly, some odd years ago. Most commonly known as Jack. Yes, most commonly known as Jack. And I'm the newest webmaster, Kamikaze Plumber. And basically what we hope to bring you is a podcast discussing various Zelda news and Desert Colossus news. And hopefully you'll enjoy it. Now, first of all, we do have some news around the Desert Colossus. For those of you who don't know, uh, the Desert Colossus has been a host to a, its very own forum RPG called Hyrule Adventures 2. And it was originally created in 2005, and it's been running on and off ever since. But most recently, we've had a spike of activity with the opening of South Hyrule, which, well, Hyrule Adventures works uh, on the basis of areas that are represented by thumbnails. And you'll see if you go to it. It's available on our site. Pretty. You should not really check it out. You should definitely check it out, because we need members pretty badly now. But the South Hyrule has been a pretty big, big deal. It's been on the horizon since the game's starting, and it's only opened about a week ago or so. And we're all pretty excited about it. Those of us who are members, we've seen a lot of members return. Uh, Winter Sink is an example. He just came back. He was there when, like, about a month after Hyrule Ventures 2 opened, and he just returned, basically, to experience South Hyrule. So, but we're hoping to attract some new members. So, hopefully, if you're into role-playing, and it's a text-based role-playing, so if you're into that, please join, and you'll find yourself with a pretty good community and having a lot of fun. And it is, it is um, statistical-based. It isn't, you know, just random free-writing. So, I mean, it does actually require some skills to do. Yeah, there are some stats, but you'll notice that a lot of characters, I mean, myself included, a lot of members... You just don't really bother using them. Pretty much, yeah. It's something you, official. You set it up, and then you you upgrade, update it every time you level, and you spend some talent points, but you don't have to focus on it yourself, and for the most part, you can completely ignore it, and the moderators will take care of using your stats when you actually participate in an official event. So don't let the stats scare you. I mean, the people there, we, are, we want members. We don't want to scare you away. So we will help you, set you up, and then if you just want to RP on your own, you're more than welcome to do that. If you want to participate in events, then we'll take care of the stats. You just have to write and basically just have a, you know, slight, slightly know what you want to do as far as attacks and stuff. I mean, yeah, it's pretty lax. You should enjoy yourself if you like role playing at all. If you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons or anything like that, it's pretty much that on a forum, Zelda themed. So and if you don't, if you don't like it, if you don't like it, uh, you don't want us to sick alpha on you. Yeah, yeah, alphas are. So have fun, or else you're gonna have to face some you dangerous be, shadow balls. You will be doomed. <laughs> you will be doomed. As he yeah, and besides, and besides HA2, there are also some other uh, fascinating aspects of the site. Specifically, the forums run by myself and Game Freak. Actually, I should mention Game Freak first. He's my boss. Yeah. Game Freak. Game Freak might. Maybe we can get him for an interview one day. That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. I mean, it isn't necessarily the most active place. Uh, recently, it's gotten a spike in activity, but it's very, very, very close. It's a great place for, place yeah. for conversation. I think the biggest... Yeah, and I'm a moderator there. I'm a moderator there, so... Yes, Magmar Fire is an excellent moderator, as well as uh, Shikamaru and some other people. <laughs> Darth Linesis... I should know the mod staff better than this. I'm totally blanking right now. Okay, Twilight Wolf. Uh, T yeah, T yeah. W. It's, it's hey, T W. T e W. Magmar Fire and Shika, and that's it. Right now. Wait, whoa. What about H N S? H N S uh, is uh, a clan leader. It's a clan leader. H N S is a clan mod. That's it. That's Gus Clans, guys. Oh yeah, the clans. The clans are actually a moderately recent addition to the forums. Um, the goal was really just to get, uh, you know, a little bit of rivalry going on, just get, you know, something a little bit more fun. Uh, 
the Wiz Rogue Clan is com uh, currently dominating uh, just in terms of sheer members, and it's generally more active forward actually. But the the Armos and the Darknet Clan, as you can see, we've got the, you know another needs all thing going on there, and the whole list of courage and power which I was trying to avoid. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, Agnar Fire can tell you better about those clans. Uh, well, uh, well, the Armos clan. Well, I am also uh, uh, um, a clan leader along with uh, Darth Windisus, who is also uh, a moderator at the forums. Um, we're both uh, clan leaders of the Armos clan, uh, the clan of defense mainly. And uh, one thing that the two of us and you know the other two members uh, were working on, we haven't worked on it in a while due to certain circumstances, which I won't discuss. Uh, we've been working on like a kind of an RPG-like thing, like uh, also stat-based, kind of like Hyrule Adventures 2, only it's more like a of a of a linear forum, you know, you know, interface. It's not like uh, the area base like Hyrule Adventures 2 is, so. Which is confusing as I'll get out. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but, yeah. So you don't have to memorize areas, really, but other standard rules apply, but we have our own uh, formula system, and uh, there's also, we also have a program, you know, like a, a Java based thing, well, a JavaScript, I mean, you know, that can calculate the stats for you during attack, an attack. So, yeah, hopefully that'll, you know, that'll help, too. And, yeah. How much else? We only have four members. <laughs> yeah, and then so there's... We, so, we, so we need four members, please. If you're interested, please sign up. Armos rules. We have really awesome shields, and we attack people if they come too close. So, yeah. And if you, and if you enter the Armos plan, there's a distinct possibility that you'll see Magmar fire space before anybody else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, awesome. I mean, if he does decide to show his face, which is sort of a uh, you know point of contention amongst the foreign members, it will probably be the Armos first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so join. You want to see my face? Yes. One of, one of the one of the basic reasons we started this podcast, but besides it, discussing Zelda, to see Magmar's face. Yes, is to see Magmar's face over audio. But really, it's to draw <laughs> attention to the Desert Colossus because we've been in kind of a, a rut lately. Slump. Yeah, so I'd I just like to say that if you put your ear to Magmar's face, you can hear the ocean. All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, but what we really want to do is attract people to Desert Colossus because we do have a lot to offer. Our communities are pretty tight. I mean, plus we have a compendium too. Like oh yeah, our compendium is encyclopedia. Yes, and we need, yes, we need a reason to work on that again. But our I mean, we love we love to have more writers if you're interested in writing for the compendium. Of few of our articles are less than satisfactory and less than recent. But also, <laughs> also we have Ask Eslo. Which, oh, uh, okay. We have the we caption. Have the caption game. Our oh, yes, basic, we haven't updated that in a while. Basic additions to the yeah. site. But yeah, anyway, awesome. we hope to attract you with this podcast. And today yeah. we'll be discussing uh, the next Zelda, basically for we the, el the elephant in the room. Yeah. Yes. What what has been, you know, the topic of discussion in the forums pretty recently. And if you check the front page, I just recently posted a news a news post. I'm saying post a lot, but <laughs> it discusses. Uh, I don't want to butcher his name. Miyamoto. <laughs> yeah, Miyamoto. 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 Let's do it that way. Hopefully. Yeah, it's outside. Miyamoto. All right, thank you. Anyways. Uh, he basically is claiming, and I, want to, I say claiming because I hope it's not true, but it, or it doesn't end up being true, but he is claiming that the next Zelda Wii will not differ that much from Twilight Princess. So we would like to discuss that, and afterwards we'll discuss the other pretty... The possi possibility that a game could play itself. Play itself. Thanks to the patent that Nintendo released a quite a while ago and it's been recently with E3 some more discussion has cropped up on it and yeah, it's actually the source of a lot of uh, 
how would I say? Strife. Resentment. Yeah. Resentment. Yeah, resentment, strife. Resentment. Pretty much bad things. Nintendo does not need that right now, but, well, we'll see. Anyways, so this is the Sandcast, and we're going to switch to roundtable mode, if you will. So, start the discussion. Alright. Well, Zelda Wii, um, I mean, of course, uh, not much of it was revealed at E3. As there was you know. that picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah there was that picture, uh, which will be included. Most of what we're, most of what what? we're yeah. talking about here is probably based off of the, uh... The, the, the one picture. That yeah. one picture. And the... Yeah. Subsequent Miyamoto interview. Yeah, but all right. Yeah, and uh, okay. As you as you look at it, uh, if you're new to Zelda at all, then well, uh, except for Twilight Princess or whatever. If you're if you haven't seen the picture yet, go ahead and do it. If you, I do, will include uh, it in the news post for the Sandcast. It'll be under Read More. So, if you haven't seen it, which is well, but if you have it, it'll be there, so you can look at it. Yeah, I mean, and for, for 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 sort of a brief sort of picture of it, it's a photo of uh, of Link in sort of Twilight Princess S gear and Twilight Princess kind of style of drawing, along with a very ethereal looking little girl. Girl, man, we all have different theories on it. It yeah. is someone silvery. Someone and silvery looks sort of feminine features with a pointed yes. head. And As a, she 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 bears a really shocking resemblance to uh, the Queen of Fairies from The Wind Waker, actually. Oh, yes. As yes, she does. The Master Sword, which is yeah, that too. Pointed. Yeah, I mean, if you if you look at uh, if you look at a bunch of the details, uh, they sort of are very reminiscent of the Master Sword. In fact, it sort of seems they're trying to go for the the concept of that. But and, yeah, and that's, that's also further supported by you know how uh, Miyamoto was quite reluctant to address the well, I mean to further discuss about the fact that Link does not have a sword in the picture. He actually spends quite a lot of time on that. So most obvious. So yeah. So fans do theorize, and it is a kind. Of, it is a really interesting theory. That it does have uh, a Link basis, has, a decent basis, in fact. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So basically, it's like she. It's it's theorized that she is like the manifestation of the Master Sword itself, which is really interesting. It's like I don't know. It's kind of like a Kingdom Hearts S plot to it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it could that's definitely that's add. It could definitely add a more interesting uh, sort, of sort of you know flow to the game. It can make it a a lot different, which would be weird because you just said it won't be different at all. But yeah, that's the. Although unless they play it like Midna was to Link. In which case, it wouldn't be that different from Twilight Princess. That's true. That's true, but I mean, if it's the sword, it's a fairly integral uh, plot, so it's possible that it'll switch control entirely over from Link to the uh, physical manifestation. Interestingly enough, I think it was today, I was discussing uh, Wii Motion Plus with a friend. Wii Motion Plus. Yes. Yeah. We'll see how yeah. that works. But I came up with this very, very stretch of a theory. No, Perhaps... I Perhaps the, the okay. Let's say this this figure is the Master Sword incarnate. Mm -hmm. What if when she is the, in her form, uh, it's third person, but when Link has control of the sword, it switches to a first person view, and you use Motion Plus as a kind of sword fighting mechanism. That would be interesting. I uh, think that would be interesting. I mean, it would it would kind of work from a third person view as well. Yeah, well, that's true. Very close up though. Kind of like over the You're shoulders. saying it'll sort of switch to like a um, oh god, what was that horrible uh, samurai game? Oh, Red Wii? Steel. Red Steel. It sort of turned into a Red Steel esque interface when you switch to. I think to so. Characters. I think that would be interesting, and especially since uh, the Wii Sports Resort will come with a sword fighting game. I don't know. I I'd like to see it. I'd hope that. I mean, I'd be. I'd definitely be interested in seeing it. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I just thought of that. It was an interesting. I think 